All right, this is a tutorial on how to make temperature and pressure sensors for your seat perch vehicle. What it does is it takes the 9 volt battery, puts a voltage through a pressure transducer, as well as a thermistor, and then using the output voltages on that, it records it onto a data logger and puts it in an SD card. And then after you're finished recording or using your seat perch, you can take the data logger and plug it into your computer and find and look at all the data that you measured. All the things you need for this project are listed in the video attachment as well as places where you can buy them. The approximate cost for the project is about $100, but a lot of the things that you find in the list can be found for cheaper or you just have laying around, and you can use that as well. The pressure transducer is governed by Bernoulli's principle, which gives the pressure of a fluid between two different points, as seen here, where P is the pressure, rho is the density of the fluid, V is the velocity, and Y is the depth. Using location 1 as the surface of the water at atmospheric pressure, and the fact that we're measuring gauge, pressure, measuring gauge pressure instead of absolute, the left side of the equation can be eliminated. Terms with velocity can also be removed because the difference in pressure due to the velocity of the sea perch can just be ignored in this situation. And if we solve for pressure, this leaves us with P2 equals negative rho g y2. This gives us the equation where we can solve for depth using the pressure that is given through the transducer. The concept of a thermistor is a resistor that changes its resistance based on the temperature. It can be approximated as a first order system for most temperatures and follows the equation delta R equals K delta T, where R is resistance, K is the coefficient of resistance, and T is measured in temperature. Because the thermistor is a first order system, we know that temperature does not change instantly, and instead the time necessary to approach the final value depends on the time response, tau. This is influenced by the medium in which the sensor is used, mass, and materials of the thermistor. So in order to build the temperature and pressure sensors, you need to start out with this circuit. So the way it's set up is the left side, the red is the positive voltage, and then on the left side the blue is the negative or the ground. So first you have uh, the voltage divider circuit that goes that brings the voltage from the battery down to 5 volts which will go into the input right here into the pressure transducer this middle pin will go to the ground and then this third one will go up to the second voltage divider circuit which will bring the voltage down to a safe level for the data logger and then using using a wire going from here into the data logger that will be one of the inputs. This extra resistor up here is a 10 kilo ohm resistor, which is about the same resistance as the thermistor. And using that, we'll measure the voltage drop across the thermistor and put that into the data logger as well. Then we add both of the sensors, the pressure transducer and the thermistor. This red wire right here is coming from the 3.3 volt output from the data logger. Um, that will power this circuit right here, going into the ground, and we'll measure the drop across that. Then here you have the data logger, so we have the ground coming from the 3.3 volt output into the ground, 3.3 output going into where the thermistor goes, um, output or input 1 coming from the pressure transducer output into here, and then output 5, um, it could be anywhere between um, 1 and 8 uh, just happen to go in 5 here. And then we have the main ground for the data logger going into the ground as well. And here's a schematic of the entire circuit altogether. It's included in the video attachment, so uh, you can refer to that as you're building it. In order to make sure that all of your instruments are working correctly, you need to check the voltages at each point. So for example, you need to measure the voltage of the battery, which should be around 9 volts. In this case, it's a little bit greater than that. Um, you should also make sure that the input voltages for the pressure transducer is around 5 volts. You should also check um, the output of the pressure transducer and make sure it's under 3.3 volts because that's the greatest amount the data logger can handle. You should also check the, the output of the data logger is around 3.3 volts as well. In order to calibrate the data logger, we need to first plug it into the computer and turn the data logger on, then open the file, that's logcon.txt, and change mode from 0 to 2, frequency um, to anything 
you would like 100 as standard, but it can be any value up to 750 hertz, up with two active channels. Then you need to ch change the active inputs to Y so they are active. And in this case, inputs 1 and 5 are active, so AD 0.3 and AD 1.7 were changed to N from N to Y. Information on these inputs come from the data sheet. So in order to calibrate the pressure transducer, what we need to do is we need to get the two beds listed in the materials. When you fill that completely up with water, then hook it up to the bottom sensor of the pressure transducer. So right now we have all the water at the same level, and we're measuring the output voltage across the um, output of the pressure transducer, and that comes out to be about 1.007 volts. And then if we raise the tube of the water up so that the depth is greater than the level of the transducer, um, the voltage changes as, as you can see here. So what we need to do is we need to measure um, the voltages at multiple different points. So, for example, we're going to measure about 6 inches high, then 1 foot, then so on, and measure the voltages at each of those points. And then after that, you can graph all of that and um, make a fit line and find your calibration with that. These calibrations will also help you make sure that your instruments are working because you'll be able to see and make sure that the fits are linear on your calibrations and make sure um, values are within range. So in order to calibrate the thermistor, we need to take temperatures at multiple different points. So what you need for this is um, a thermometer of some sort, in this case we're using a thermocouple, some water at different temperatures, and a voltmeter, as well as the instrument. So what you want to do is you want to take the temperature of the water, so, which we have here at the thermocouple, which um, happens to be around 20 degrees Celsius. So what we're going to do is um, then you're going to put the thermistor in the water and then you're going to um, wait for that for about um, for a little bit, wait for the thermistor to reach its final temperature and then you're going to measure the voltage drop across the resistor in the voltage divider circuit with the thermistor. Then using that voltage, you can plot that on a graph with multiple other points, and then you can make a fit line to find your final calibration. Waterproofing the instrument is actually pretty simple. All you need is a finished instrument, some hot glue, and a gallon-sized Ziploc bag. So what you first want to do is you want to tape down each of the components to make sure that they don't move while you're actually using it. And what you're going to do after you tape all that together is you're going to put it inside the bag and make two holes on the bag to let the tube for the pressure transducer and the thermistor outside of it. So after that, um, what you want to do is you want to take the hot glue gun and you want to fill the holes and make sure that every surface is completely covered. And there you have your final temperature and pressure sensor working for your seat perch.